The end-to-end -end encrypted protocol that powers the Signal Private Messenger, as well as other more popular proprietary messengers like WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, and Skype, which collectively have billions of users, recently got an important update that's going to give the people using these messaging apps resistance to quantum computers. The name of this new quantum resistant encryption protocol is called Post-Quantum Extended Diffie-Hellman or PQXDH. And for you more technical viewers, I'm gonna leave a link in the description of this video to the white paper that explains the protocol's details. But for the rest of you, let me just explain why this new protocol is so important and why we really need more post-quantum encryption protocols in our applications. So you've probably heard that several big companies like Google, Microsoft, and Amazon, they have developed these record-setting quantum computers that they use for various applications. And also countries like the US, France, China, and Russia, they have their own quantum computers as well that they use for research and for military applications. And both big government and big tech would gain a lot from being able to use quantum computers to break various encryptions that you and I use on a day-to-day -day basis. With governments, there's already a standard in place, a standard protocol called Store Now and Decrypt Later, where they're collecting all of the encrypted communications that are going over the internet, especially from targeted people, and they're just storing them until the day that they have a quantum computer powerful enough to decrypt all of those messages. But in my opinion, that day is already here because last year, IBM unveiled a quantum processor called Osprey, which featured 433 qubits in the processor, the highest number ever achieved in a quantum processor. And by the end of this year, they're expected to complete work on their new quantum processor known as Condor, which is supposed to be the first one to exceed a thousand qubits. The number of qubits in quantum processors is increasing exponentially in a way that's similar to the doubling of transistors that we saw with Moore's Law in classical computers. However, unlike the classical processors in your phone and computer, the actual computing power of a quantum processor doesn't just double when you double its qubits, it doubles when you add a single qubit to it. So take IBM's Osprey, for example. They could create something called Osprey XL, which has just 434 qubits, and it would be twice as powerful as the regular Osprey. And just like we saw with classical computers, the cost per qubit is also coming down substantially as well. In fact, at this point, I think the most cost prohibitive thing with running quantum computers is the refrigeration system that's necessary to cool it down to like almost absolute zero so that the computer doesn't generate any errors. I think they use liquid helium or some other kind of exotic cooling system that's more expensive and even colder than liquid nitrogen. Now you're probably wondering, what is it about quantum computers that make them so good at breaking encryption? So more specifically, it's asymmetric cryptography or public key cryptography that's the most vulnerable because these cryptos work by using mathematical functions that are sort of like one-way functions. They're really easy to do one way, but difficult to undo. And in the case of elliptic curve cryptography, it relies on discrete logarithms, which in general are very slow to compute on regular processors, and in some cases would take lifetime of the universe for a supercomputer to compute. But because of the fact that qubits are able to hold multiple states instead of just zero or one like traditional computers, they're able to run quantum algorithms like Shor's algorithm very efficiently, which itself is the most efficient algorithm for solving the discrete logarithm problem, which ECC relies on, as well as the problem for finding prime factors in very large integers that RSA public key cryptography relies on. And remember, quantum processors can run those algorithms twice as fast for every one qubit that is added. And the number of qubits in these new processors is increasing exponentially. So non-quantum hardened public key cryptography is pretty much broken already 
in my opinion. I mean, if you're a person of interest, I'm certain that your encrypted comms that the NSA stored years ago are being read in some underground government bunker right now. And if there's anything in those messages that they can use to suspect you of being a terrorist under the Patriot Act or whatever your country's equivalent thing is, then you can be certain that the van is probably heading to you right now. So I'm very glad to see the Signal Foundation introducing PQXDH and eventually implementing it in their Signal Private Messenger. And since other applications like WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, and Skype use their protocols as well, I'm sure that they're going to be implemented there too. Although it is worth mentioning that those apps are absolutely proprietary and you cannot be sure that Facebook or Microsoft or whoever are not simply copying the private keys off of your device that's used to generate the public keys in this cryptography from the very beginning. The whole point of Shor's algorithm and store now decrypt later is to reverse engineer these mathematical functions from your public key so that they can derive your private key. But if the private key is just stored in a black box app with network access, there's no reason for you to believe that the private key can't just be copied off by that corporation whenever they want, whether they are compelled to by law enforcement or not. Since it is a non-free application, you, the end user, do not control it, that corporation does. But in the case of Android, iOS, and desktop Signal apps, all of those are AGPL licensed, so you can have spook-free communications with them right now and into the future, no matter how many qubits big tech and big government get in their quantum processors. And there's one last thing that I want to point out about Signal's post-quantum encryption implementation, and that's the fact that it's more of an upgrade than just a replacement to the old standards. This is important because there have been certain algorithms that were hardened against quantum computers that made its way a good way through the NIST testing, but they were then found to be vulnerable to attacks from classical computers. You see, that's the catch that can come with, I guess, patching bugs and trying to increase your security. Sometimes you create new bugs or new security holes, but with Signal, they augmented their existing ECC cryptography with Crystal's Kuiper protocol, a NIST post-quantum finalist, which claims to offer security roughly equivalent to AES. And in Signal's words, the attacker would have to crack both of these encryption schemes to decipher your messages. So if Signal wasn't the most secure end-to-end -end encrypted messaging application yet, it certainly sounds like it is now. But we can only really take advantage of this post-quantum cryptography in Signal if people are actually using Signal. Sure, WhatsApp and others will add it to their black box apps, but those are still apps made by ad companies whose primary purpose is harvesting your data so that they can sell it. So share this video to spread the word of post-quantum Signal so that more people will actually install and start using it. Leave a like and a comment on this video in order to hack the algorithm and check out base.win to get merch like this open base shirt that I'm wearing right now. Discounts are available store-wide when you shop with Monero. Have a great rest of your day.